5. Missing Persons Discovered in Lakes The beach is wonderful for sure, but a lake, with its glassy, calm, and serene surface, holds a different, enchanting charm that is hard to replace. A perfect vacation spot for family and friends, these natural wonders don't only hold water. Sometimes, they harbor dark secrets. Here are five missing persons discovered in lakes. Number five, Brenda Kerber. Brenda Kerber was 40 years old when she vanished back in 1989, and it took 30 years and an environmental awareness program for her body to be recovered from a man-made lake. On January 19, 2021, an environmental research initiative was conducted at the Muscoot Reservoir, a water reservoir in the New York City water supply system, 25 miles north of White Plains, New York. As they were inspecting the water quality of the lake, researchers from the New York City's Department of Environmental Protection stumbled upon something stranded at the bottom. They found a 1982 Ford Granada station wagon completely submerged in the waters. What they found inside the vehicle was even more astonishing. They discovered human remains. White Plains police were immediately called to investigate the matter and to identify the deceased individual. Later on that week, it was determined that the remains belonged to Kerber, the woman from White Plains who disappeared without a trace. Upon review of the evidence, as well as an examination of the recent findings from the recovered vehicle, authorities ruled her death as suicide by drowning. The circumstances surrounding her disappearance and eventual death are as bizarre as the case itself. The woman's father told detectives at the height of the investigation that she had been depressed after her failed marriage and sought spiritual guidance. This was when she stumbled upon an occult group led by the infamous Frederick Lenz, a man who called himself the Zen Master Rama. The Oregon native then followed Lenz to New York, where the cult's operations were based. The cult leader charged exorbitant fees in his lectures on his so-called American Buddhism. Kerber had since been an avid follower and supposedly never missed an event. This put a serious dent in her pocket that she would sometimes ask her parents to help fill. On October 10th, the woman's landlord in White Plains informed her parents that she had been missing for about a week. An investigation was made after that. Aside from her station wagon, Kerber's personal belongings, cash, credit cards, and even her diaries were left at her place. It was along the pages of her journal that the police were able to picture out the dire situation that she was actually in. Her parents have since passed away years ago and never got the chance to know the fate of their missing daughter. Number 4. Janet Ferris For almost three decades, nobody knew what happened to Janet Ferris who disappeared and was never heard of again. Had it not been for some kid and his trusty gadget, the woman from Vancouver Island may have never been found. In 1992, Ferris, a 70-year-old from Mill Bay, British Columbia, was driving her car on her way to Alberta to attend a wedding. She never made it to the venue. Alarmed, her family notified police An investigation was made, but authorities couldn't find any clues that could lead them to her whereabouts. Despite all their efforts, they weren't able to find a trace of her, and her car was missing as well. So with no leads or information to work on, authorities were forced to set aside the missing persons case, but left it open nonetheless. Then came 2020, where a boy named Max Warenka together with a few guests, set out on Griffin Lake near Revelstoke, British Columbia. Warenka's family lived in Sherwood Park, Alberta, but ran a summer resort 
on the lake in Revelstock. The establishment had been operating for 17 years and none of the tenants or its guests noticed anything amiss about the place. But in August of 2020, Warenka and his boating companions noticed something in the water. About five meters below, they could see what they thought to be a submerged car. The 13-year-old immediately notified his parents who in turn told the police about the discovery. On that same day, a couple of officers from the Royal Canadian Mountain Police Department arrived to verify the report. They went to the area of the lake that the young Warenka pointed out, but much to their bewilderment, they couldn't see the vehicle. To quell the confusion, Max decided to jump into the water with his GoPro camera. He went back to the surface with footage showing the car turned upside down at the bottom of the lake. This prompted the RCMP to call for a dive team, a tow truck, and a boom to haul what was later identified as a 1986 black Honda Accord. Everyone was further shocked to see a female body inside. Meanwhile, authorities ran the license plate and discovered that the submerged car was owned by Ferris. The Accord had been reported missing back in 1992. Upon further inspection of the car's interior, the police were able to find identification materials that led them to confirm that the remains belonged to Ferris. As speculated, the woman had likely swerved to avoid an animal. It's also possible that she lost control for some other reason and rolled into the lake. The fact that they found no visible front-end damage to the car led them to believe that a frontal collision never occurred. Number 3. Carrie Parker March 17, 2021 marked the 30th anniversary since Carrie Parker went missing in 1991. And while the year was able to yield a significant development, the case remains to be fully concluded. The mother of three from Quinlan, Texas, had been planning one of her child's birthday parties when she disappeared. The circumstances surrounding her disappearance remain unknown to this day. Her 1981 bluish-gray Buick Skylark with Texas plates went missing along with her. It didn't take long for her family to notice her absence when the 23-year-old failed to show up to her son's event. In an interview in 2018, the woman's sister, Patricia Geiger, recalled that their family immediately told a friend in law enforcement that his daughter was missing. All along, they thought that the constable had filed a missing persons report in 1991 in Hunt County. Meanwhile, Patricia opted to file a missing persons case herself in Terrell, Texas, a few months after they failed to hear anything from the Hunt County Police. It was a big disappointment when in 2010, almost two decades since Parker had vanished, that they discovered that Terrell Police had instead filed the report under welfare check rather than a missing person. Adding to the frustration was the fact that When they in turn asked Hunt County officials about the report, the office said that there was no record of their sister's missing persons report. Hunt County Sheriff's Department explained in 2018 that the case had been difficult for them to work on since they had insufficient information for the investigation. In the midst of all these setbacks, Parker's family continued to exert their efforts in finding the woman. By the look of things, it seems like their struggle will soon be paid off. Because on February 4th, 2021, a diving team from an Oregon-based organization called Adventures with Purpose came across Parker's vehicle. The discovery happened as they were diving in Lake Tawakani, which is a 38,000-acre reservoir located in northeast Texas, 15 miles away from Quinlan. The search and recovery team, which often investigates cold cases, found the vehicle turned upside down in around 15 feet of water near the FM 751 Causeway. The Hunt County Sheriff's Office was immediately notified. 
They brought with them a crane, which they used to recover the car from the depths of the waters. Considering its severely deteriorated condition, the vehicle broke apart. Although its entirety was not fully evacuated from the depths of the water, it was enough for the authorities to determine that the 1980 Buick Skylark indeed belonged to Kerry Parker. At this moment, the official statement from authorities said that no remains were found inside the car. Adventures with purpose in the Hunt County Sheriff's Office, however, are expected to deploy a forensic dive team to make further inspection of the site. Number 2. Cheryl Miller and Pamela Jackson On May 29, 1971, Cheryl Miller and her best friend Pamela Jackson were on their way to a party in South Dakota. The two 17-year-olds were riding a Studebaker owned by Miller's grandfather. They were the last car in a convoy of young partygoers. As the rest of the revelers arrived at the venue, they noticed the two girls missing. They were further concerned when they learned that they hadn't made it back to their respective homes either. An investigation was immediately conducted, however police couldn't find a single clue that could help them find the two missing students from Vermilion High School. The situation forced them to put a halt on the search operations as well. Rumors and speculations abounded at that time, and some believed they had been kidnapped and murdered, but still there was no sign of the girls. But then in September of 2004, 33 years after the girls had gone missing, Union County Police questioned a man named David Lykin. They had received word from an informant that this man, who was serving hundreds of years behind jail for rape and murder, may have had something to do with the girls disappearing. Authorities raided his property, and there they found human remains and a few personal items, but they didn't belong to Miller or Jackson. So, Lykin was soon cleared from the charges after it was determined that the informant had apparently lied. Years rolled by and still no one knew the whereabouts of the two missing youngsters. Then in April of 2014, 43 years since the South Dakota girls had vanished, a surprising development surfaced. Near the town of Elk Point, a city in Union County, South Dakota, runs the now famous Brule Creek. A local resident reported having seen the wheels of an upturned car protruding in the waters. Authorities then found out it was a Studebaker, the same type of vehicle mentioned in the 1971 disappearance case. A retrieval operation was made, and days later investigators confirmed to the public that this was exactly the Studebaker they'd been looking for. Inside were found the well-preserved clothing of the girls, as well as Miller's purse, which contained her IDs, including her driver's license. In that same year, the South Dakota Attorney General confirmed that Miller and Jackson had both died of an accident. The basis for such conclusions came from the forensic report conducted to detect foul play. As evidence showed, the girls were sober when they drove to the party. It was surmised that the vehicle may have went off a gravel road and dove right into the creek. The impact had likely rendered them unconscious. Considering that the car was still in third gear, the key stuck in the ignition and the lights still turned on. The rather grisly discovery somehow brought closure to the families of Miller and Jackson, as well as the Lycans who were relieved of the inmates' innocence on this particular case. Number 1. Six Missing People from Oklahoma In November of 1970, Jimmy Williams, along with his friends Thomas Rios and Leah Johnson, decided to stroll around their little town of Sayer, Oklahoma. Williams had just bought a brand new Camaro muscle car. The teen, who worked in a grocery store as a part-time clerk, told his parents that he, Rios, and Johnson 
were going to watch a football game in Elk City, which was 25 miles away from Sayre. But it was all a lie. They were actually planning to go on a hunting trip, and the trio was never seen again. The townspeople of Sayre were as baffled as the respective families of the three youngsters. Authorities who conducted an investigation admitted that it was a hopeless case, considering that they couldn't find any information that could help them unravel the mystery. And then, in September of 2014, a unit of the Oklahoma Highway Patrol Marine Enforcement Division were conducting training sessions involving the use of their newly acquired sonar technology. They were on Lake Foss, which is about 100 miles west of Oklahoma City, when they did the testing. Out of the blue, their radar caught something strange 12 feet below the surface. They detected not one, but two cars. The patrol officers first thought these to be stolen vehicles that were dumped a long time ago. A retrieval operation was made on the submerged cars. Pulled out from the water were a 1969 Camaro and a 1952 Chevrolet. Upon inspection of the interiors, they saw six sets of human remains, three in each of the cars. It didn't take long for the police to determine the identities of the individuals trapped inside. As stated in the reports from the medical examiner's office, the Chevy belonged to a 69-year-old, Alvy Porter, who vanished sometime in 1969, just a year before the three teenagers disappeared. The other occupants inside were Clayburn Hammock, who was 42 years old, and Nora Duncan, who was 58. Meanwhile, the remains inside the Camaro were confirmed to be that of Williams, Johnson, and Rios. Authorities officially determined the cause and manner of deaths as a probable case of accidental drowning. However, the public couldn't help but point out the macabre nature of how these two similar cases occurred in exactly the same place. So there were five missing persons discovered in lakes. Most of the time, people can find anything that reminds us of our mortality in places like cemeteries and burial grounds. However, it's frightening to know that some found their last resting place at the bottom of a lake, submerged and abandoned but never forgotten. Check out our Patreon page if you guys enjoyed this video because there every single week we have creepier and scarier stories for you guys to check out. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you soon.